Back here, SEC Football Kickoff Media Days 2022. Pleased to be joined by Clark Lee, head coach of Vanderbilt. But by, by the way, I mean, rocking the linens, you know, clean. Summertime, like. I tried. I swear to you, I felt great about this until I got on stage <laughs> with you four. And now, I'll ask. Did, did you dress that well before you got to Nashville? Uh, this is all done for me. You know that. I, this is. Uh, they send it to me. I put it on. It's a head coach outfit. Right that's there. right. You know, you got to do it right. I think. But I appreciate that. Coach, uh, thrilled that you get to spend some time with us as uh, th this is your last of the rounds today. You've been making the rounds all morning long, but we're going to save the best for last year. Let's start with this. How do you measure growth this year? Well, um, there's there's obviously growth that's incremental, and it can really come in every form and fashion. I mean, we, we look at everything in our program as, as a measure of performance, and so... Um, you know, the way our guys go to class, the way they perform in class, you know, the spirit and energy with which they bring to the field and preparation, uh, the connectivity in the locker room, all those things we're looking to as metrics for program growth. But, you know, obviously we want we want to shift in results as a measure of progress, too. And we know that that only comes if we take total ownership of our um, our performance. And, and, and that's why our focus is just on playing at our highest level as a team. That's what we're focused on. Um, we don't just say that. Like we have, we have um, measures within each position group where we can actualize that, but we have a total focus on us. And um, and I think if we can do that and replicate it, I believe it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna come up with a shift in result too. Coach, we had a phenomenal conversation with mm -hmm. you earlier today, and you kind of explained to us the dynamic within the quarterback room. And of course, I mean, in this league, you got to have one. You have two. I think that's a wonderful situation to be in. Mike Wright's here today representing the program as your starting quarterback, but you also have Ken Seals, who's still on the team, which is not normal in today's day and age. If you can tell us about that dynamic and how that has all worked itself out for you, that'd be great. Yeah, I mean, I think <clears throat> there's a lot left to be worked out, but, you know, these two guys have, have, um, have competed hard together for two years. I mean, they've... You know, they've they came in in the same class and, you know, there's been conversation around both of them. And um, I think early in, particularly when you're young, I think the competition takes the forefront for you as a player. And so that's your focus. You know, you want to you want to beat the other guy out. You want to be the guy. And what we've asked of these guys is to continue that <clears throat> ruthless competition on the field, but to focus off the field on on building our program. And um, I've been really pleased with the progress they both made in leadership um, and you know, you can't, you know, the, the conversation with Mike to say, hey, you're going to be the starter heading into the fall, <clears throat> that's an easy one to have. The conversation with Ken to say, you know, you're going to have to beat him out and you're going to have to earn it, that's a challenging one. But to Ken's credit, he didn't flinch. Uh, he set his jaw. He's had a great summer. I'm expecting him to have a great fall, and he's going to make it really hard on us. And that's what you want. Competition drives performance, and uh, we want to be a program where iron sharpens iron. I know very well the, the unique challenges that Vanderbilt presents, having been a player there. I think what's interesting, the perspective that I think a lot of fans don't understand is when I was there, the numbers are probably similar. There's 6,500 undergrad at Vandy, right, compared to schools that have 30, 40, 20, whatever it is. So the sheer allotment of boosters and money that you have to compete in today's NIL is very, very different. So you have to differentiate. And I know you mentioned that up at the podium. Yeah. What challenges and I think what do you see from your unique perspective at Vandy maybe changes in NIL? Do, does this college football world need to look at moving forward to make sure that there's some sense of equity. You know, I, it's, um, there, there's, there's a lot in there, and I think you're centering on, um, you know, a lot of the questions that need to be answered, and I think those are going to be answered at the, you know, commissioner level and at the, um, you know, president, chancellor, athletic director level, and certainly we think at the federal level at some point too. But, you know, for me, my, my attention is focused on, on how we differentiate our – our team in this market to create a strategic advantage, and and, and you know the the truth is, um, team building is a is a is a science and it's an art, and it's been the same for a long time, and we're we're seeing strategies around team building that are untested, untried, and I don't know that we know the lag effect, and so to me. I think it's an opportunity for Vanderbilt, particularly in an early part of a climb and an early part of a build, to to just um, you know consistently improve day in and day out, to to really uh, pay attention to foundation and identity, and over time that consistent climb I think will carve out a competitive niche in a world that's become very volatile. Um, aside from that, I mean we. You know, we, we obviously are, are doing everything we can on our end to, to be competitive in the NIL space, and yet 
we, we think there's a way to do that, um, that that honors the integrity of a transformational totally. experience and doesn't shift everything to transaction. Because we don't want to train transaction as, mm -hmm. as a leadership model. You know, we want to teach young people how to come together and do hard things at a high level consistently. Coach, t take us into the locker room a little bit more in the meeting room. I read where you showed uh, video of last year's spring practices, and then you showed a uh, video of this year, and you showed your team the difference. Tell me, tell me why you did that, and what was mm -hmm. the response of, of the players? I think sometimes you lose track of progress. You know, you, you, you're, you're, you, need to, you need to look back in time to realize where the starting point was. Because we don't know, I mean, when we, when we inherited the program, and as we started, you know, um, Vanderbilt football only knew Vanderbilt football to be what it was. And slowly you've seen this evolution internally. And I wanted to make sure the, the players recognize the fruits of their labor. You know, we've asked them to do a lot. We've asked them to step into change. And um, that's a big ask. Young people are resilient and they will fight. But um, sometimes, you know, the, the, the crust can be built up so far that it, it's hard to get them into the ring. Well, we've pulled and prodded them into that ring, and now we want to show them how that's transformed them. And that was the point of the exercise, and I think they came away um, really, you know, astonished at the, the advancement. And it's not about, um, you know, that exercise wasn't about the introduction of new players. It was the, it was the exercise that demonstrated the value of development. And, um, and I think it was a, a great moment for us, and we look for more of those. Clark, when does fall camp open? We're starting July 29th, so we July get an early 29th. start because okay. we're playing week zero. Oh, you're at Hawaii week <laughs> That's right. You're at Hawaii. Zero. Um, so I, I love like what the Hall you of said. Fame game. Yeah. yeah, it is. It really is. <laughs> the, Hall Canton, of Canton. the Hall of Fame. Canton's going yeah. up to Canton. Um, I, I love what you say with team building is science, team building is art, and, and piggybacking off of what Benjamin said, you showed them the tape from last year. So there we are July 29th, right? And you get to be the head coach again. You're getting ready for a season. You gather your troops. Now, if, if we're sitting there, the four of us are sitting there in that great black and gold ready to play for you, and we're ready to fire off on July 29th, turn to us and tell us what that day one opening of camp message is. I want to know what that message is day one. Yeah, you know, that's great. Listen, uh, I'm going to disappoint you Come because <laughs> you're starting. The, the thing you have to guard against in fall camp is they are going to go out on that field yeah. and they are going to absolutely blow the GPS of numbers course. through the roof. Mm, right. And so um, we really, you know, we're process driven. And so that message, they, they spent a long time in the summer. We will have fun in that meeting. We'll show um, uh, images of tr physical transformations through the summer. Oh, that's cool. Uh, uh, it'll be a blast. Yeah. But um, it, we're really. <laughs> what about from the coaches going the other direction? Yeah. 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 The barbecue. The barbecue yeah. fear of That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Here was yeah. him yeah. before yeah. the lake trip. Here he is. Now. That's right. Yeah. I mean, I can't tell you the number of times today I thought, man, I've got to get back on the treadmill. Um, but um, we'll have a lot of fun with that. But it, it really will be level setting. I mean, it'll be a meeting that'll be meant to set a tone for, for the work to be accomplished. And that'll include setting uh, the si our sights on what we want to accomplish, but also doubling down on kind of the fundamentals but of who it, we are. It just came up because you do have something interesting. When you open at Hawaii, it takes a very different approach to how you go about planning. How do you deal with that? Because different kind of trip, different atmosphere, almost part early bowl, one of those type games yeah. very early in the season. So we have to jumpstart. Yeah. You know, we have to be ready before we begin. I, I would even say a year ago, one of the criticisms that I, I took on uh, myself for our team was um, just we, we, we weren't starting fast. Well, now we don't have the luxury right. to sit around and wait. And so, um, you know, that game that will be played in Hawaii, there will be a lot of factors that go into the outcome of that game that go beyond just the talent on the field. Um, it's the trip. It's um, the act, you know, getting you know acclimated to the the time change in the environment, and then it's being prepared to throw the first punch. And we have to have that as a part of our, and we will have that as part of our formula in every day in camp moving forward. Um, and we have to trust in that preparation to get us ready. The shift in results. Let it begin. The total ownership of performance. It'll start out in the Pacific. Coach Lee, great to visit with you. So what good nice to be with you, other than feeling a little self-conscious about my suit. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You have that great Peloton in the office, don't That's you? right. You know. Uh -huh. You've been there. Yeah. No we both got to get back on it. That's right. I've That's been right. off for a while. No that is doubt. Vandy's Clark Lee. We're going to continue 